yes recording is started so welcome to the uh, the first we can say the first virtual event for ahmedabad before that all was in person but due to the situation covid situation uh, the in person is not possible that's why we have started the virtual events as you know that ki all all our location are as a virtual event is going on so uh, let me show you the screen uh, and let me go through that so in the ahmedabad meals of meetup group uh, today we are covering uh, the error handling in meal 4 and error handling is done by you know that bikal is uh, from in uh, from infosys and uh, the any point monitoring and alerts is uh, given by the session and demo demo for error handling and demo for any point monitoring alert given by the error handling for bikal and monitoring Uh, by the sorab and uh, these are the actually guidelines we are following in the meetups keep, keep yourself unless you have any question for example uh, if we are sp speaking and you are not muted so it's unnecessary uh, uh, disturbance maybe this comes from your side so this is a guidelines we encourage you to keep your video on for interactive session we all are kind of strange here so if we on the video then it will be very kind of uh, the communication and very frequent uh, very good session between us and we, we will know each other and uh, you can write down your question on the chat session basically uh, so what we are doing when once you uh, once you mention the questions we are trying to answer uh, right now but due to uh due to while giving a demo or the our speaker is kind of very uh, concentrated on one topic so we will answer the letter but every question will be answered okay so once joined please write down your name and email in the chat so we can have attendees and please provide your feedback uh, at the end of this meetup and when meetup is ended it will uh, there will be one email generated from mills of side as it is means of even and you if you given a feedback means what are the drawbacks what are the advantage what are the advantages any improvement in this meetup or you want to suggest a topic in future or complex topic or any topic you can suggest in the feedback also okay so agenda so today we start with networking and knowledge sharing i am going to give you updates and we have a two topic error handling and any point monitoring alerts and we have a question and answer then we have a question and answer for regarding the topic error handling and any point monitoring and alerting and we have a quiz uh, for all participant the all participant will have uh, the winner three we will choose three winners uh, from quiz and uh, three winners will be eligible for training and certification from mills of side at any course and uh, at the last we are discussing about the next meetup uh, stay connect happy learning yeah so this is the update from my side uh, Uh, as uh, as mills of release actually I'm, i have given you the release notes here you can go with uh, how many releases we have got for example any point studio 7.6 with 4.3 releases got here we have got new updates like uh, we have written a blog on that key that uh, the parallel for each also uh, as a graphical support coming to the picture for parallel for each it was not there before later version of the latest version 7.6 the this uh, support there and apart from this update there are other many update also there so you can go with the, those release note mills of product releases you can go with that and the most important that mills of connect so the mills of connect going to happen on uh, the 13th of october and the 20th 20th of october so i am suggesting you to just register for it it will be kind of very non eligible person the, the leaders come and they given a session they given an update they given go through for mills of and it will be very good session for knowledge sharing it will be good session for understanding the mills of product so it will be very good if you connect if you register for a mills of connect so uh, about the organization so my name is shekh manuddin you already know that i am working as a in an appraiser as a mill architect i total i am having total 8.5 years of experience as as you can see that the save seven years of experience in millsoft so after one year of my career i have started millsoft i have started mill mill run time 3.4 so 3.4 is first mill run time i have started working on as you can see that the 4.3 come and apart from me the rajesh kumar 
and the Tejas is also organizer organizer from Ahmedabad Mulesoft Meetup. And this the sponsor of this Mulesoft Meetup is Mulesoft. And uh, about the speaker, uh, Kumar Sora from Deloitte, is consultant, and will uh, basically given error handling session. And uh, so not sorry, uh, Kumar Sora will give any point monitoring alerting, and Bikal will give the error handling session. So I'm going to stop my sharing. So it is it is time to start with uh, the first topic with the speaker. So let me stop sharing. <clears throat> yes, Bikal. Yeah, I'll share my screen. So guys, let me know once you see my screen. So are you able to see my screen? Shake, uh, can you confirm? Yeah. Uh, what minute? Uh, yes, yes, we are able to see your screen properly. OK. So uh, hi, all. I'm Vikal Bhalia. Uh, I'm a Mulesoft ambassador and meetup leader for Vancouver. Uh, I have total six years of experience, out of which four years in Mulesoft. So right now I'm working as a Mulesoft technical lead in Capgemini. So today I, we will discuss about Mule 4 error handling. So basically, if we, I don't know how many guys you have worked in Mule 3 or Mule 4. So the major announcement in the Mule 4, 4 was what? one of the major announcement was error handling so basically uh, we have two kinds of errors uh, it was same in mule 3 and mule 4 so uh, system errors and messaging error system errors are like syntax error uh, for example um, <clears throat> you are missing a property file or you are missing a configuration without which you cannot even deploy your application so though the such errors comes into the system error category and then the messaging errors like uh, your connectivity issue or uh, mule expression error where your data view fails because of some uh, bad data so those errors comes under messaging errors so in in messaging error your application will get deployed but in system error even your application will not be deployed now, how Mule 4 handles these error? So critical error, uh, that means your system errors. So, and any errors are the messaging error, which are again um, categorized into transformations, expression, validation, connectivity, routing. Now, coming to Mule 4 especially. So this session will be more over a demo session rather than having, uh, we just discuss about uh, the theoretic. So first thing is default error handling. So default error handling is something laziest kind of error handling. Okay. So let's say if I don't uh, do any error handling, so Mule Mule will do it for me. Like developer is not doing any uh, error handling. So by default, Mule Mule has an error handling mechanism, and uh, it will throw you some errors. So let's see what it will throw. I'll just Okay, so right now we don't have any, so we don't have any error handling done for this flow. Okay, so how Mule will handle this error? Let's see that. So my application is deployed and uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, this this request, uh, the, 
I have just given a dummy uh, connection details in the requester. So let's see how the mule soft handles this error. So the structure in, in mule four, it is simplified uh, than the mule three. Mule three, you get whole lot of strict trace and, uh, but here in mule four, it is very simplified. You get this five lines, which says message, what is the issue? Uh, so issue is this connection was refused for this, which element? Uh, so this flow line number 23 request element okay and uh, what was the complete uh, component then the error type and the flow state okay now we since we have not done any error handling this is done default by mules of a uh, mule runtime but what if you if i want to handle it uh, i don't want to handle any uh, error at flow level, I just want to def oh, want to override this behavior from the mule because default behavior it is, but I want to override this behavior. So in mule, we uh, it gives us a default error handler. Okay, so what you do is uh, in the mule palette, you just type error. So you will see error, error, error handler. Okay, and once you drag it here, you can add n number of on error propagator on error continue. We'll, we'll come to on error propagator on error continue later. Uh, but just for now, these are blocks which will help you to handle the errors. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm just overriding what Mule was uh, doing. So the uh, default behavior, how I want to handle this. Because if you see right now, it just gives me a 500, nothing, because there was no payload set. Okay, so let me, and how you enable this in the configuration. Once you define, go to configuration. So configuration, select configuration. Here you have an option to select the default, default error handler. You just select it. Okay, I'll just save it. Let the application get deployed again. So it is deployed. Now, uh, now the default behavior was overwritten by the user written um, error handler. Okay, so this is the first thing, and I just want to show here something. Here in the response, always try to put uh, payload in the response. Just just a guideline and and HTTP code. This will help you to define your APIs in a better way because your API will always give a correct error code, HTTP and the payload what you want to set. By default, when you drag a listener, it will give you a payload here, but nothing in the status code and error dot description in the error response. So always overwrite it, write, uh, return a payload. This is kind of best practice, which I follow. Uh, just wanted to share that with, with you guys. Now coming back to the error blocks, like I said, on error continue and on error propagate. So if you guys remember in Mule 3, we had five exception strategy. <coughs> catch rollback uh, choice default global so <coughs> it, it is simplified into two error handler blocks one is uh, on error continue one is on error propagate okay now what is the difference between on error continue or on error propagate so on error propagate whenever there is an error which is handled using on error propagate Though, though whatever uh, behavior we wanted to replicate here, we wanted to set, it will be set, but this error will be propagated to the parent flow, okay? So in this case, if you see this flow, uh, this flow is a simple flow, a listener, it is, uh, it is calling uh, a flow uh, in which we have a requester, and then we have handled the error here. Okay, so once the flow will start, it will go to this flow and again, this will fail because I have given a wrong configuration here. And what it will do is it will go into the owner propagate block and uh, it will do the error handling, but it will propagate this error, even though we have handled the error, it will propagate the error to 
uh, the main uh, block main uh, parent flow and uh, since we have not done any error handling which is fine it will return the payload whatever we have set here because here in the response we have again set the payload okay and in on error continue what it will do is it will call this flow it will again fail it will handle the error but it will when it will go back to the parent flow parent flow will assume everything was fine in the child flow and it will process the next processor it will go to the next processor so we can understand it in a way like uh, wh what owner propagate will do is it will give a red red signal to this uh, flow ref okay there was a red signal you don't have to go you should not not go to the next processor and in the uh, corner continue it will say okay a green signal everything was good go to next processor and process the flow continue the flow uh, let's see how it works let me know oh, meanwhile the project is running any questions on this i'm not seeing the chat window so just let me know if you guys have any questions here one question on error propagate if we mm -hmm. set variable will it will it be set yeah variables will be set so on error propagate if we set yeah variables we can set h in the default configuration so I'll get back to you on the HA. This is uh, basically to high availability question. So I'll get back to you. It has nothing to do with the error handling right now. So uh, Santosh will get back to you on the HA question. So our application is deployed here. So I'll just trigger the owner continue flow first. Okay, this one. So let's see what happens here. We had uh, we had an error here, okay? So error, uh, it was captured. But if you see, when you see, there was a logger which was printed, which says end, which is this logger, okay? And uh, here I set a transform message, which, which is set to success. So if I see, I still received a success, okay? Because uh, when this return, when when we use on error continue, this parent flow assumed that there was nothing wrong in the child flow, and everything was success processed successfully, and hence the next processor was executed. Now let's see what happens with on error propagate flow. Okay, so propagate. So we have the same flow, same error hand error handling. So now you see we don't see any logger next processed and no success message as well in the postman. Okay. So this is how this is the basic difference between on error continue, on error propagate. Now coming to the next topic on the error handling is try and catch so this is a newly newly introduced feature in mule 4 it was not in the mule 3 so this enables you to handle exception on processor level okay it was not present in the mule 3 it is it is a mule 4 exclusive feature so this right now so with this try catch you have three levels of error handling one is you can handle at processor level here you see the processor level or at flow level or a global hand handler you can define a default error handler so in this we will see about try and cache and uh, the the scenario would be let's say you have you are querying uh, your travel you are you are trying to search, get a flight details uh, uh, you are querying on uh, make my trip 
so how make my trip works it will it will use uh, uh, indigo and other airlines api to get the fare and display you in one single console so what if there one of the airline site was down okay so in that case what should be the scenario should it return you okay some no result or a result so such scenarios will be there one another scenario will be a for each where you are sending records using for each to a database or or to a api where you don't want any if your any of the record fails you don't want your process to stop in that case again you can use this uh, uh, try block uh, so let's see how it works so here this uh, my flow is simple uh, we have a scatter gather and we have three routes so second routes i'm throwing an error so the first flow is without try and second flow is without uh, with the try okay so uh, application is getting deployed application is deployed no. So I'm querying, uh, I, I want the results. So what it says is server down, which is not expected behavior. Even though my one of the airline site was down, I don't want uh, to show a server down response to my all users because still I'm getting response from two other airlines. Let's show them through other airlines and we, we can, uh, in background, you can check with the third airline what is wrong with, with their APIs. So here, this try block will be very handy. So what I have done is I have wrapped up this try block, uh, this, uh, this particular transform message into a try and handled the message using on error continue so that it will show that everything was fine with this particular route. That's one more use case of on error continue. Now let's see. So again, we try blog. So here, still we got an error, okay? There was an error, but still we managed to send the two results from two other airlines to our user. So this is one of the use case of try in the error handler, specifically in the error handler. There is one more use of try uh, in Mule 4, which is to initiate a transaction. But since this uh, topic is all error handler related, so I would not go into the transactional things. So we'll limit ourselves to the error handler use of try. So this is the second topic I wanted to cover here. Now let's see the third uh, topic, which is error mapping. So Mule 4 provides you a feature where you can map any error to a custom error. Okay, so here, and I just wanted to show one more feature in Mule 4. So in Mule 4, you can see all the errors at, at the design time. In Mule 3, this feature was not available. So if you want to see what all errors this component, uh, I'm using a JSON schema um, module. So what this valid schema is component can throw an error, what all errors it can throw. So you can just click on the uh, search button here and you will be able to see all the errors possible errors which will be generated by this particular component so yes okay. yeah it is one of the very good feature that keep we are able to see that number of errors and otherwise we have yeah. to go to the hierarchy and we have to basically copy and paste each and every yeah. error type yeah. with no name space so, so my experience in mule 4 i usually what what I used to do was uh, I used to throw an error and copy that particular string which uh, caused by and then used to handle that in the, the catch exception block. Yes. Yeah. So there are so, two questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, so 
there are from santosh uh, why do we have a processor level error handler when can handle error at flow level so what advantage do we have with the processor level error handler okay so uh, here in this uh, block i already shown uh, the advantage of having this feature uh, let's say this was a assume this was a requester i i kept a transform message uh, to show you, show you success messages so assume these are the requester you are requesting and this scenario which i have told you you um, your api is uh, used connecting to three other uh, airlines to get the results of uh, airline fare for particular dates user has submitted you dates and uh, they want to know what all flights are avail available and what are the fare for this so your first airline is showing okay airline is indigo uh, prices flight price is 1000 now second is your spice jet and third is your uh, air asia and flight price is this but what happens if if something goes wrong with any of this how it will work it 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 will fail your uh, it will fail entire result set so what what uh, benefit you get from try is you can just wrap that all the uh, routes in a try block and you can wrap them you can just contain their error you can you can limit that error and you can uh, again log it or send a notification whatever processing you want to do with that error but still you will be able to send the results set written by the other routes this is one example with the scatter gather i'll i can give you one more example with the 4h you have an array list okay and then you are using 4h and you are inserting a single single records in database what if uh, one there was a one uh, one element of the array was a bad data the fields uh, the values were bad and uh, you get a uh, sql error so if you don't if you handle it at flow level what will be it will it will stop processing all the flows all re remaining records and it will generate an error for you but if you handle uh, if you if you wrap that for the database component there itself and handle the, that error you can still process your remaining records uh, insert the remaining records in the database. So this is the benefit of using try block, try block, um, try catch processor on the component level. Uh, second, uh, there are use cases you don't want to handle. Uh, okay, it is already answered by that. Any other questions we have? Hey, there's one more question in try block. What could be the result if we use the error propagate? Again, error propagate. If you use, uh, it will propagate the error to next level. So on error propagate is again I shown you like it will always propagate your error to the parent flow. It will stop processing immediately there, and it will go back to your parent flow. And if there is no parent flow, it will result return the result. Uh, in case of HTTP uh, API, in case of uh, uh, listener or JMS or something, it will stop processing there itself. Same scenario can be done at, no. Uh, Ravin, the same scenario cannot be done using the on error continue at flow level because you see if, if you handle uh, where it is, the file default default error handler. So if I handle error here, okay. If I if I use on error propagate uh, on error continue here in the flow, what will happen is the pro processing of the flow will stop here itself. It will not go uh, to the next processor, even if I use I on error continue here. But what will it? What is the significance of this? Is it will again say a success to your inbound connection. It will it will say okay everything is good here. So the only difference is. Let me show you the on error con on error continue here. Transform message. 
and the same details. Okay, so I have handled, uh, I, I kept a owner continue here. So ideally, so what will happen, it will still process here and it will go to owner continue and it will return back to the uh, response, listener to give you the response, it will not go here. So only difference would be if I use an owner propagate, it will give me a 500 or uh, some status code, but here I have not set any status code. So it will be treated as a success because this is how on error continue works. And you will still get a 200 response on the, on the postman. You see, even though we handled the error, we got a 200 response because the, the, it, it is designed in a way that it will all, the parent flow or the inbound connection will treat owner continue as a success. It returns a green signal uh, if, if you talk in the colors traffic line thing. But if you use owner propagate, so so basically we were talking if we had here, if you do owner continue, it will not even process your next processor. It will stop here. But if you if you wrap it into a tri block. Okay, it will end use owner continue here. It will go to your next processor, which is a logger. So, did I answer the questions or we have more questions? We have answered the all questions. So Upasana okay. joined it, I, we will summarize. We will try to summarize after the session done. Okay. Yeah, we were talking about the error mapping. So here, what I'm, I have done is uh, we are using a JSON schema uh, and uh, the JSON schema says, okay, so JSON schema says that uh, we it should be uh, there the JSON which will be coming incoming JSON should be should have these fields ID name company position but the ID should be integer type okay but what uh, if we don't send the ID as integer type it will throw an error on this component and the error will be uh, JSON schema not honored but if you send this scheme this a response if you if you log this this is kind of very technical uh, in case you are sending the error logs error notification to uh, to any business user okay what happened so this will this will log it is very technical but what but what you can do is you can simplify it you can map it okay uh, it it is the JSON schema not honored is because of an in data error some some bad data or something so how you map it i'll just show you so if you want to map which one you want to map you have to select uh, and the name is space you can say data and uh, what is the identifier error this is how you map the errors okay let's run it let me see what is the path here while it is running uh, the one question is from not uh, mm -hmm. if we apply uh, on error propagate on the try catch so it will go no it will not go it will it will not it go will, to next node it will go to the parent so so say. again again owner propagate always propagate the error to the parent flow or uh, parent flow or the calling flow so parent flow will or or if you don't have any parent flow it will go to the source 
from where this flow the transaction was initiated okay 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 yeah so in both the scope uh, the flow will end unless uh, we use yes the flow will end uh, in both the cases at the flow level uh, ayushman the only difference would be uh, if you use on error continue it will it will be treated as success at the listener at the source from where your transaction was started but flow 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 um, will end there itself flow execution will end there itself so yeah uh, the code is deployed uh, let me go this is the invalid json so see uh, we we kept an invalid json uh, where the id and uh, what it shows is the type is json schema not on and field name id message uh, which was passed as a string does not match uh, the primitive type which is integer but i don't want to send it as a json schema not honored I, I i want to make it more familiar because it is a data error so like i showed you you can always map it to some other error like i did here so let's try here when i when i send this inverted import okay now this is processed so see the same error the J, there was a json schema not on you can see the mapping here and the error type it will show you as a data error and you will see a data error here so this is one of the use of map error mapping you can map it depending on your use case now coming to next topic which is custom errors okay so mule for gives you a flexibility to raise a custom error and it is way simpler than mule 3 so in mule 4 you have a component called raise error and uh, uh, you can use this to generate a custom error so in this scenario what this um, this scenario what it is doing is it is checking uh, uh eligibility to for driving license so this flow what it does is it takes the age okay and it checks uh the precondition and and how you raise the error type so you always like you have seen in the error mapping okay there it is like you have seen in the error mapping if you want to do uh, if if you want to raise a custom error the, the there is a def, defined structure for to raise a custom error you have to give a name space and and identifier to it so here again if you want to raise a custom error you have to define a name space which is the preconditions and an identifier which is in correct age so let's see how it works Uh, meanwhile, it is deploying. So, mm -hmm. question from yes: If we have a try catch block with on error propagate in private flow, and we have also implemented global error handler, so what would be the behavior? Try catch block in a private flow. So, your still your try catch try catch block will execute. Okay, it will on error propagate with propagate your error. Okay now if you have not done any error hand, handling at the flow level if you have done any any error handling at flow level it will execute your flow level and depending on if you have a flow level error handler like owner continue or owner propagate it will execute so in this particular scenario what you're saying i'm assuming that you have not done any error handling at the flow level because it's a private flow so it will propagate your error and it will go to it will again go to global error handler 
Yeah, thank you. Yes, for asking a question. There's one question from Dushyant. It is recommended to use on error continue to get final response from each. It totally. It it Dushyant. It totally depends on your uh, use case. So, in in this the use case I was showing, yeah, on the based on the use case, yes, on error continue was the option to get me the results for other other routes even any of my route fails okay so it totally depends on your use case what what is your use case okay uh, yes. custom error again okay so custom error let's say um here uh, we have a api which checks the eligibility of whether you should get a driving license or not so it checks whether the age now there is nothing wrong in the payload dot age but even i want to validate it that people above 18 years will get the license people below 18 year will not get the license mule there is no no mule component which will do this check for you so what mule has provided you can raise your own errors okay based on your business errors this is basically used to raise business errors so in in this case my business error is precondition incorrect age okay this would be error if anybody who is applying for a license is below 18 years so let's let's check the let's say i pass 17 what are the error response i have uh, my api is returning okay precondition fail minimum age should be 18 to drive so this is a business error. This is this is this is not a mule error. But since you want, you have a business scenario in case, in case this number is less than 18, you should throw an error. So this component raise error component help you to throw this error. Okay, and this description supports data view, but type it does not support. Uh, it, it supports only string, and description supports data view. Okay, and uh, if I pass 18 here or 19, whatever it is, yeah, eligible for driving license. So this is a this is a business scenario which I want to use say, and this raise error component comes very handy in in, in raising the custom errors. Okay, so we have covered owner. Uh, on error blocks, default error handling, try catch, error mapping. Okay. Now let's see because Mule promotes API led connectivity, how you can use error handling. It is just an example I'm showing here. There, there may be other ways you are already handling the um, errors in the API led connectivity, but I just wanted to show you two things which I designed here. Okay, I'll just show you the flow, how it is working. So this is a process API, and this is considered this is a system API. So this process API invokes the system API, and this will this is again some target, uh, HTTP based target. And I have set it, uh, uh, set a, some incorrect configuration here, which will fail. Now there are two ways to handle this. One is you handle the error here, and how, but you want to propagate the same error to your process api so what you can do so one thing you can do is you can play around play with your response code here okay so in the response code if you say successful validator like nine uh, 200 to 59 uh, 200 to 599 all are success and then you can use a choice block and see if the status code is greater than 399 raise error and uh, error system api some error happened in the the payload dot error so the payload what we are returning here is error dot description something like this so here it will be the description this is how one way you can propagate it the second way is you can use error dot error message payload so if you don't want to play around play with this response code if you set it to none this will come handy error dot error message dot payload so error dot error message will give you the payload 
uh, returned by the calling API. Uh, okay, let me run this. See. So right now I I have set response code validated to none. So we'll see what is the exact behavior, how this will behave. So the code is deployed. Okay. So what happened in the first case is the system API was invoked and there was an error which was handled here. So if you see the logs, okay, the system API started executing and there was an error and it was handled here in the in error block in in error block and this was the details but when it uh, since it was propagated to system api process api it again uh, shows that there was an error and this is this is what happened there now if i just do let, let me run it in debug mode so I can show it to you in more detailed view. So the code is deployed. Uh, okay. So there is error on this invoke target. Now what will happen next if we go to next processor? Error is handled here. Okay. Now since we handled one error, uh, it was on error propagate. It went here. Now if you type payload here, you will not get anything. Payload is nothing. You will not see the payload. But what you can see here is your error object. So error object is this, something went wrong here. Okay, why this is a timeout. Okay, so something went wrong there. So error object you can see here, error object you have all this detailed description how you access the error object error error dot description error dot detail description if you want the error type error dot error type and then this is strings okay now we are more interested in what payload was returned by the system api so what how you can get it error dot error message value this I just know. just on it why it is timed out mm. error dot error So here you see error dot error message. So this is the object is written. And here, if you say error dot error message payload, it will return you the payload what was sent by the calling API. Okay. So this is how you can retrieve in the error, whatever payload was sent by the system API, you can just retrieve here with this expression. Now, the second way I was talking was you can you can set the response code validator to success validator or failure depending on whatever the response code you're receiving. If you set the success code validator like 200.2599. Dot 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 so all the success codes, all the HTTP code coming with uh, within this range will be treated as a success. 
so what will happen here so now it will not show any error this this will not show you any error okay uh, so let's trigger this there is an error here see previously when we set the error status code response status code uh, to none this component has thrown as an error but now since it is the validator we have set to 200 to 599 it is saying everything came with the success norm now let's see what was the status code return the status code was 500 so now you can this is the second way you can do the error handling you set a choice block you check what is the status code if it is, it is greater than whatever like here in this case i am saying 399 raise error okay and it will just say uh, whatever the error is payload error description we got so so now you have the error description here and the error type is error system api so this is these are the two ways there may be other ways you are already doing it but these are the two ways i wanted to show here how you can use this error handling mechanism to hand propagate errors from one api to another api in the api let connectivity so this was pretty much what i wanted to show you guys on or uh, error handler let me know if you have any questions okay difference between validate and validate and laser so validate is again i guess you are talking about validation module So validation module is again a module where you have all many um, many operations so referring to the specific case i was just showing i showed it that uh, just for the demo purpose you can use this validator if you want to validate your uh, values because the validator validation has many operations here i just wanted to show a demo so i use the way custom error there may be scenarios which are not uh, dependent on the number there may be strings or something else so you can on you cannot always go with the validation module and validation module is more on the validation um, many things are included here is ip or url or blank string is a number it says is number but mine is a number but i still i want to see um, the range i want to define a range it should be greater than 18 then only it should work otherwise it should fail okay so this is the difference between validation and uh, custom error so i use that uh, example just to show you how you one of the business scenario uh for business errors which status code we use generally it depends on your business you ideally you should use a valid http code which are defined you can just check the wikipedia for http code so i can just tp status i can share that link so you can choose based on your scenario which one you want to see you can you can get this http listen status code from here uh, can we change status code with the custom error message no you cannot change a status with your custom error uh, message any other questions guys you can speak i guess you all have audio enabled so if you want to speak you can speak
rather than typing messages in the chat window. Guys, any questions? Uh, yes, uh, but it should be enabled. Let me enable yours. Uh, we were trying. So, guys, we are we are enabling uh, audio and video for everyone. If you if we missed you, let us know. We can enable it. Okay, Santosh. Yeah, we have, I have enabled guys. Anybody else who is missing on the audio, let us know. We'll enable it. I guess, uh, Shik, we are pretty much done with the error handler. We can go to the next topic now. Uh, Saurabh, you there? What is new? Who's disconnected? Yeah, I am here. Yeah. I yeah, think. I guess you can start the topic. Yeah, Doshan, sir. I'll. I'm enabling. Uh, guys, let me know in the chat window if you your audio or video is not enabled. I'll enable it in background. Meanwhile, Saurabh will start with the next topic, which is any point monitoring. Over to you, Saurabh. Yeah, thank you, Vikal. Um, okay, I'm sharing my screen. Let me know if you guys can see. Okay. Enable the presenter mode for you guys. You, it, it is up to you. You, if you want to enable mic or audio or video. Uh, what we can do maximum is to enable the presenter mode so that audio or video mode will be enabled for you. Now uh, you need to click on enable audio or video to enable your uh, audio or video. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. My screen is visible, right? Okay. Thank you. So, hi guys. Um, I'm Kumar Saurav. Um, I've been working with Deloitte from past one and a half year. I have total um, six. Uh, sort of you are on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. Um, okay. So, yeah, I was saying that, uh, okay, I am Kumar Saurav. Uh, I've been working with Deloitte since uh, one and a half year now. And I have total six years of experience and 5.5 .5 years of experience in Mailsoft. So, Okay, I'll today my uh, this topic is any point monitoring and alerts. I'll walk you through with the slides and then I'll I'll give you the demo uh, demo about it. So so why why do we need any point monitoring? Uh, that's the question. So basically uh, now if you if you can see there is a single uh, this mobile application or a web application now it crosses almost like more more than 35 different technology systems or component that we need to connect uh, in order to create a web application or a mobile application so now because of this the complexity introduces so and so there there is a gaps that does uh, that got created in observation where like which node got 
field and where the actually issue is happening and every other um, issue is happening that is a bit complex to identify now because there are so many systems and we have to track off all the systems so that's the problem now now the again then um, another issue is to identify the um, so the increase the time got increased to identify the issues uh, you have to check all the all the applications and all the um, systems basically from where this node, node got failed and why this application is not working now so again the if the identif uh, identification time got increased then obviously the resolution time will get increased automatically so that's the another problem and then uh, because of all this uh, the customer uh, will face the poor experience because they'll the the downtime will be more and then um, they'll face the many challenges to access those applications and because of that uh, we lost the revenue obviously as a as a customer um, so obviously customer is facing the XPM bad experience then um, yeah you'll face the revenue uh, lost in the revenue okay um, so this is overall uh, idea about the uh, I guess you or most of you might know about the AnyPoint platform and you have all the idea but this is the overall idea what is the AnyPoint platform and where does AnyPoint monitoring sits so if you can see that monitor AnyPoint monitoring sits on the top of all the all the application all the basically the um, layers that we have in the AnyPoint monitor uh, platform so there is an integration all the API management and on top of that there is a API led connectivity that we have and then um that everything got wrapped under the application network and then the application network got wrapped under the AnyPoint monitoring so the benefits of any point platform is uh speed of delivery obviously that uh, it's a it's a simplified web ui that we have uh, we can do we don't need to write any codes for that we don't need to do any customization or any 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 um complex coding for that and so so all the uh, we can we can discover that um, apis and we can reuse the apis uh, so that's the benefit of using the anypoint platform um yeah so all these things so and the security is there uh, it all got secured Sorry. by the api yeah uh, just uh, just stop sharing uh, the toolbar they are just tag change the location to blow the millsoft.meetup is sharing your screen this one tool bar. Okay. Uh, yes, this is go. Niche kar do. That's yes, fine, right? I, yeah, that that is fine. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now there is a uh, external visibility is that the, uh, so we have a detailed insight uh, every transaction and everything. We can set alerts uh, respond uh, to the um, uh, to to mitigate the violations. So if let's suppose that if any application is getting failed or any any issue is happening, we can alert the user or the business user uh, that this is happening there. Uh, you can go and have a look. So all sort of things that we can do end to end visib visibility is there for from all the APIs. <clears throat> and so as you all know that we have a uh, different uh, deployment uh, models so there is an on-prem cloud hybrid or any uh, pass uh, containerized so and um, as as you also know that the anypoint platform pro provides the zero down time um, so these all things that you can achieve so now this is a slide for what we are getting. So there is a two kind of uh, license that we have as a platinum and a titanium. So what we are getting as a platinum user or as a platinum license holder. Uh, so this is the in from the perspective of any point monitoring. We got the we, we got the any point functional monitoring basic alerting and the main uh, the main application performance monitoring thing now uh, for the log management there is another uh, feature available as a log management where we can uh, we don't need to uh, introduce any external logging component as a splunk or anything we can log our uh, we can 
uh, we can log the raw data and everything we can see as a timeline and every raw data that we can log here and we can uh, analyze the logs so but um, that is with the titanium feature only so all these things that we have as a platinum user this is this block is only with the titanium feature so now uh, this is with the titanium so along with sorry along with this uh, you'll get all these things with it as a titanium user as a connector metrics flow metrics advanced alerting and reports so reports is something that you can create your reports and so time to time you can create your custom reports and then you can get an overall idea of your api network that what is happening in the api network which api is failing which api is taking which uh, how much time what is the response time request time everything that you can enable in this report and so with the with the log management we got this uh, another another features that we have it with the titanium along with that is distributed log management advanced log and log warehousing tokenization everything that we got and all these custom metrics advanced custom dashboard so with the with the platinum we got the custom dashboard basically for the custom dashboard you can create your uh, dashboard as per your need as per like what what do you want to see in the uh, in in your dashboard that you can configure it here as per your business need so yeah all these things that we have okay so now uh, this is an end to end transaction tracing uh, with the any point monitoring that we we are doing it here so this is the built in dashboard that we have uh, with the any point monitoring so you can uh, basically you can analyze so if any node node got failed or any 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 api basically any uh, uh, the api is not uh, performing well or it's failing any endpoint is giving you an error you can analyze it here uh, with the response time request time what is the duration it is taking how much uh, so as per the flow wise flow wise also you can see that this much request is going what is the count of the request what is the count of the failed request pass request uh, all the all this sort of things that you can diagnose here and based on that you can analyze okay where is the problem and you can go and fix that problem so this is very useful in the way where uh, this business uh, business users has no idea they are not uh, they are not too much into this uh, integration uh, development and everything so after after delivering your code uh, now they can analyze this code and they can go and check everything where the issue is happening and they can diagnose it and repair it or maybe uh, uh, fix that issue okay so this is for log management as i said like this is uh, that comes with the titanium feature but uh, titanium license but this is a feature where you can analyze the every every endpoint logs or to your whole api network you can log uh, like you can check your logs here you can check every raw data for the um, so there is a search bar uh, you can type your query here same as the splunk or any other uh, logging tool so you can give your uh, query here and based on that you'll get uh, all the all the logs and all the count of the request and everything that you will get here based on that you can see that uh, where it the what is the root cause of the problem okay so this is our advanced data analysis uh, advanced data analysis uh, means like the overall insight so based on that like what is the cpu utilization what is the heap memory consume consumption the messes what how many messes got processed uh what is the response time by the endpoint every single detail that you'll get in a uh, in a structured way or a graph way uh, where you can see that okay at per the at at this particular time this is the problem where this is consuming more um, cpu utilization or more memory it is consuming this is a threshold value we we have to see uh, okay uh, beyond this point obviously our api will get failed or our application will get failed so we can analyze all sort of this uh, thing and then based on that we can take action to prevent uh, the failure okay um so this is alerting uh alerting is for 
so abnormal behavior to identify an abnormal behavior and the problems in your application network so basically like you can uh, you can create your alerts over here uh, so uh, severity you can give it could be critical warning or information uh, so based like let's suppose if any business uh, business uh, logic is getting failed or anything is getting failed you can create a critical uh, based on your severe business use you can create an alert and then it will notify to the user uh, you you have to give provide the email id of that and then it will uh, yes okay. it will it will uh, give the it will send a mail to that particular user to the business user that's saying that this is this uh, api got failed with particular this uh, error so based on that other many options are there i'll show you in the demo uh, that we can create a deployment success deployment failure every kind of alerts that we can create here and then we can notify the business user so the mules of will send a mail uh, along with the error or the warning okay so these are the basically what i'm saying is uh, these are the alert types that you can create um, so based on the licensing that what we have so this is for both platinum titanium so cpu utilization you can create a alert memory utilization thread count message count uh, message error count message response time all these sort of thing that you can create an alert uh, for your cloud hub application or any like hybrid application so so this is the and this is for only titanium okay so metrics measured in the custom dashboard uh, that is that you can do in the titanium only so again and for the for the runtime um again you can create a for the particular application uh, you can create the alerts basically so this is for monitoring based uh, alerts and this is for application alerts so for cpu uses memory uses deployment fail deployment success excess event traffic threshold worker not responding so sometimes it happens that where your uh, worker is not responding you have a multiple worker setup and uh, there some your primary worker is not responding and uh, you were not uh, like you, you don't have any idea about it so this is something that when whenever this worker is uh, going into the unresponsive mode yeah mules of will trigger a mail and you'll get that idea okay something went wrong and then my primary worker gets down so this kind of facility that we are getting with the mules of any point monitoring and alerts so with all these uh, that we are achieving it achieving here is uh, that uh, the visibility and observability uh, enables that data driven decision made to uh, to decision making so where where the problem is uh, where problem is there and how we can resolve it so all these things that we are getting a uh, inside data of our api network obviously it will reduce our mean time to resolution um so that we can reduce uh, so we can resolve it uh very uh fake, like very early uh with a no time or something like that so now it will increase the uptime um and prevent issues before they happen so uh, as i said like maybe the worker is not going into the unresponsive your primary worker got uh went into the unresponsive mode uh, then you can probably before going down to the other other um, workers and everything you can go and check why this is happening and you can uh, correct that thing so that your whole application will not go uh, down okay uh, along with that we have this uh, cloud hub connector uh, this is also for a uh, mm, sending the notification to the business user so suppose the use case is something that we we have uh, we we have some business failures and something that we need to uh, so business uh, the users wants to see every error what is happening so with that uh, particular flow or the particular application so uh, here we can use this create notification or this notification cloud hub connector um, you of use so this is something to interact with the cloud hub applications and it will provides us the operations uh for the mule application as well as to send the notification from your mule application to cloud hub 
okay so there is a one uh, which is very useful is create notification uh, you just have to drag and drop the cloud of connector into your message processor region and then you have to configure it so for the configuration we just need to provide some uh, some details like username password and which environment you are using it so based on your environment you have to provide this and um, that's all uh, after that you can configure your error or your information so suppose like there is a business if you are uploading some files to any other um, some sftp or anywhere you can notify your uh, business user that okay this file got completed so based on your use case you can configure it uh, um, with your every every other business uh, data and then you can notify the user to uh, to the any point to the platform so yeah that's all um okay any questions so far uh or i'll move ahead with the demo i think uh, no question from okay members. so okay so i'll go ahead and i'll show you the so i have two applications here uh, so i'll show you the uh, this cloud hub notification demo first and then i'll show you the uh, the any point monitoring um, logs or, or the dashboard over there so i have just a simple application i'm just calling it as a, uh, calling a system api from here and then i am so there is a there is a note uh, this uh, cloud hub application is there cloud hub so this all these features that we have is a create notification get application list application list notification and mark notification so i'm using the create notification here so for the create notification uh, i have this cloud hub configuration so we need to create a cloud hub notification and here we need to provide a username and a password and a environment id or uh, if you can it will fetch it if you will refresh it from the metadata it will uh, fetch the uh, based on your username or password it will fetch the name of your environment so either environment id or the name of the environment you can provide it here and yeah so after that uh, it just so so this is my success so if you can see the configuration here so this is a message which i am doing so okay well, one more thing so this domain is required for the app name so app name will decide so basically for which application you want to trigger the notification so you have to provide the app name basically which application name that you have uh, deployed it into your cloud hub so that same name you have to provide it here and then the message uh, that i can configure it anything um, it is just like same as a data weave that we are transforming it so same way we can do it here um, putting something into a string and then writing a payload here i can transform something and then i can put it there so all sort of thing that i can do and yeah one more important thing um, that we can set the priority here so based on that is an info or error or warning that we can do so if, if it's the info it will not trigger us a uh, mail or any alerting uh, it will just give us an info or that okay this file got processed or this record got processed something like that now now uh, let's let's assume that something goes wrong uh, that anything any in this flow anything got failed and then there is a error handling scenario and we have this on error propagate and so here uh, we can create a uh, error notification so again uh, the configuration is same the app name is same only thing that we are changing the message here uh, that occurred in the flow and we can transform it based on that so i am just uh, writing the error dot description here and i'm printing it here so and priority i'm choosing the error because this is a error that we want to notify to the user uh yeah so this is all uh, okay now if i want to hit the service so if i'll hit the service here so i got the message successfully pushed to the queue i can show you that same thing 
so i'll go to this app so we have that overall alerts here uh, so this will be the combination of all the apps if you want to see the so we got the information just now is 12.25 we got the information that successfully pushed to the queue so if you want to see the particular this application alerts only you have to go here and then when you open this you'll get the notification saying that uh, this is this info and successfully pushed to the queue okay now if i uh i need to uh need to fail it so that i can show you the the error notification okay so this this uh, flow got failed it got some error uh, now if you will see here So now if you can see it here uh there is an error now it's alerting that okay this error occurred in the flow that this is something that happened wrong so the so the developer can go and see this okay something got or something happened wrong here and then they can check it and fix the issue so this is the for the create notification okay and along with that we will receive a mail because i have set up a alert here so i will get the mail here that saying you are receiving this mail something like this so this any point platform alert notification hello you are receiving this alert because this something went wrong in your application okay so something like this uh, we'll see for the alerts also and for the uh, other other uh, alerts that we have set um, set it up for that also so any kind of error because we have set up the error a uh, consist error then any kind of error it will happen in the flow it will will get the mail notification for that okay so now for the monitoring um so yeah so for monitoring we have to go here to that monitoring So in the setting, uh, you can enable your monitoring for which application if you want to enable for only one application for all, you can uh, enable it from here. So, so since I have two application, I've enabled it for both. I can disable it from here or enable it as per our need. And I can take it here if I want to newly de deployed application will automatically get enabled the endpoint monitoring so now i'm going to the built-in dashboard this is something that we are already getting it from the mules of uh, so this i have selected the environment here and now i'll pick the resource so this is the application cloud of application that i'm choosing here so this sort of uh basically the dashboard that we got from the mules of stating every statistics uh, so this is something that okay so i'll explain everything so this is an overview tab overview tab is um giving us overall idea about our application so if you can see and this is the time frame that we can set it here so which particular time if you want to see the logs we can set it here so I've selected the last three hours uh, and this is the refresh data tab and after that we can see it everything is here so if you can hover on the every application uh, every graph you can see as per the time frame like increasing the time is increasing 11 10 53 54 11 so how many record got failed so it's like here the total request out of total requests are 73 got failed 16 got passed here if you can see um, 95 got uh, processed five got failed so all sort of thing then the average response time you can see it here this is the average response time at this point at this time uh, is 1.742 second 
and then it goes down so all these things that you can monitor how your application is behaving uh, and uh, what's the analysis data for that so so this is a mule message that we are receiving <clears throat> and this is the outbound basically the total response time response type is that so what kind of response uh, request that we got and this is the response average response time data again this is a cpu utilization um so at what point of time what is the utilization um so if you can see so this is a worker zero this is right now i have only one worker so that's why it's showing worker if you have multiple workers set up it will show you the every workers uh, cpu utilization so that you can monitor that okay if any worker is taking more time what is the real issue here uh, more utilization basically uh, so this is the utilization here then the jvm heaps used this is a memory used so for one worker we have that limit so this is the orange line is for the limit that is 478 mb and the blue line is for uh, the real time data that we are uh, having for worker zero so this is all good all normal and then this is a thread count that we have so if you can see this is the thread count is changing now uh, this is the inbound uh, tab uh, for the all the inbound requests that we are receiving um, so overall in the overall i have explained you everything but yeah this is another metrics that we got here so what is this for this endpoint was the average average time minimum um, minimum response time and the maximum response time and how many total record uh, request it received this it might received how many total requests this is the total number of requests and uh, others other analysis data that we have so this is a kind of another graph that we have for total slow request by endpoint so where the record got slow or response time got slowed all these things so so same way this is for outbound tab uh so another graphs are there this is another metrics that we have for the the basically the system api that we hit uh, and all the number of requests and all so this is a performance tab where you can see all kind of performance data so the response time um and this is all the percentage wise that you are getting the response time here so the average response time and the uh, um, time grouped up with the by http endpoint so all the endpoints like this is taking this much of time so again uh, this is for failure and then the infrastructure and jvm is for again the heap memory and everything that what we are getting so this is the infrastructure is again the uh, for the cpu utilization heap uh, memory used um, total system processors system memory and thread count so all these things are here yes okay so you can change the application you can switch your application from here uh, for another application if you want to see you can see it directly from here now we have the another concept is uh, this custom dashboard so based on the custom dashboard like you can create your own dashboard uh, based on your business need so you can create the dashboard from here so i have the i have this three uh, dashboard that i have created so this is giving me the memory consumption and then the timing of this api the response time and then the total number of requests received so i can create something like i'll show you okay i can uh, add the graph single state uh, table or a text so all this kind of way i can create what kind of data that i want so and so let's assume this like let's suppose this i've added this here is the plain tile and panel tile uh, and i can configure it here so with the configuration there are metrics that which we want to show so i can 
select from this drop down which metrics basically which we want to show the failure uh, average request count or a success average request count cpu utilization uh, load average what anything which we want to monitor we can select it from this list and then based on that it will give us a matrix and we can select the environment here and and uh, all done so so all these things are there so there is an advanced mode also for advanced mode basically we can write our own query for which organization id environment id api id and then the, this this query basically we can create it here and based on that we can uh, monitor this application so the time range also we can decide it here uh, which time range basically which always we want to see so that time range that we can define it here um, this is the op uh, options that what threshold value that we want to what we want to uh, put colors and all uh, font size and every other options are there to uh, to, to create your dashboard the custom dashboard and then the value mapping is there. so when we apply the change and then this is the basically the data that we are getting it here as like if you if you don't want to see something with a very um overall data and everything is there and if you are not getting it something so you, you can create your own custom dashboard here and you can get the relevant data so now there is a alerts so alerts is something that you can create your alerts uh, as i mentioned there um so from there uh, you can create your alerts from here so, uh, uh, can yeah. you show can you show uh, the runtime alerts which you have configured before showing those alerts here sure so the runtime alerts is we can uh, we can create it from here so this is the runtime manager and here is the alert tab that we have um okay so this is for um runtime so for the application basically you can create uh, alerts here so all sort of custom alerts deployment fail deployment success worker non-responsive all these uh, errors that we can create it here so to create this uh, we need to click here you can choose whatever the name you want to uh, choose so let's uh, um, just cache custom dashboard uh, one so now the severity level basically you can choose uh, as per your uh, requirement or use case uh, what is the severity level critical warning or info now you can choose it for servers and applications what is the source of that now you you can choose your hybrid application and cloud of application here and then that from this list you can choose your application for which application basically you want to create this alert so i'll choose this or you can choose the all applications also here so both the so both the options are available now the condition that we have is so which kind of uh, condition that you want to create the alert you want to create cpu uses custom application net notification deployment fail deployment success exceed uh, traffic threshold memory uses worker not responding secure data disconnected connected all sort of thing that you can uh, create here so now if you will choose the memory uses um, you will get this tab okay where uh, at which point you want to get alert so this is something that uh, as i said like uh, if you want to uh, if something is going wrong and if you want uh, some prior information or some prior intimation you can do it here and then based on that when it reached to this percentage automatically you will get a mail and then you'll get an idea that okay something is going wrong with your application so this is for at least for 10 minutes before uh, that you will get this and then uh, so this is something that based on this kind of body and subject you'll get this here you need to add your recipient so i can add mine or something like that if i can add something and then i can submit it so just to so add you, got, just to add you can even add uh, any other uh, email address out of this uh, 
uh, any point yeah uh, multiple email id yeah yeah so any email id any gmail id or any or multiple users multiple ids that you can add it there um, to get the email id emails basically uh, so yeah so this is and i'll show you the sample also what kind of mail basically we'll get so this is the kind of like because we have selected the severity crit critical so this is a critical and then the custom application net notification that we have selected the uh type basically what kind of alert type that we want to create and this is the body that we are getting so that you are receiving this alert because uh this this is the application name and then the error notification for this error description and this is the description of that error that we got so just now for that like i have only configured my email id so that's why i am only getting i can configure n number of email id and then all the people uh, in that list will get the same email so this is all these things so i'll show you the another example for deployment success so this kind of mail like because i have this uh i have configured this for deployment success so whenever i deploy this like or the when you are using the ci cd or this autom uh, this deployment model so that time this is useful where uh you have configured it so every time the deployment gets successful you will get a mail that okay the deployment of this application has succeeded or failed so both the both the both kind of alerts basically you can see it uh through this um so yeah and then there is a, another as like for monitoring uh i was showing that so for the monitoring alerts you can set the monitoring alerts from here so there is a for this platinum user of platinum license we have this only basic alert we can choose the alert same way uh like this and then the it's, it's everything is same that server or application you can choose your environment and then uh you can choose the application here and then what kind of condition you want to see so tip cpu utilization memory utilization thread count error count all these that we have as a platinum uh, license so this is uh, that only we can choose it from here so let's suppose cpu cpu utilization if you want to put and then what what percentage that you want to put here so let's uh, suppose like we'll put the 70 percentage and then at least 10 minutes before i want the notification so now here uh you can configure your custom message and the all the emails so what what could be the subject and everything that you can decide it here and then you can add all the recipients here um in this list and then you can create it So this is all the it's uh, enabled here and then this is a uh, this is the alert for you okay um, and okay and so i'll show you the real that i have this jvm uh, sorry the jmeter um test group uh, sorry this test plan i'll trigger it just to show you the real time data for that um uh, for that uh, application so basically We'll trigger it so my request is going there and some of the record is getting failed also so we'll we'll get all kind of notification here uh, basically that uh, in this So it takes a few seconds or few minutes to get that actual data so if you can see right now this 1230 data is there is the last data so yeah it will take a few seconds to give us the real-time data okay so meanwhile it is getting the data from uh, the runtime and so let's uh, give the answers of some question so yes asking that we course require so it's purely depend on your application number of flows number of data flowing from application because whenever we select a code so basically it is attached with the memory the heap memory 
So it's purely based on your application logic, basically purely based on your application data flow. The data loads in memory number of objects load in the memory. So you have to chill set or you have to deploy that in the course. Can you explain what are the various application infra involved in mule troubleshooting an issue? Um, application and infra involved in the mule this application in infra what as what does it, your meaning for pasna actually out of the box or from mules of side so because in troubleshooting we are having monitoring we can monitor the fall uh, the monitoring the and we have a uh, like analytics uh, we can see that errors and even in the runtime uh, runtime dashboard we can also see that at, those are the kind of application or infra we have in any point platform. Okay. Oh, Pasna, right. I have, so, I have uh, enabled your audio. If you can come on the audio, it would be great. Because your question is still not clear, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we we got the real data here uh, that API got triggered and if you if, if uh, we can refresh the data from here so if you can see uh, this is the 1244 timing and this is like 33 record got failed 67 got passed and so this is the response time and all the mule messages that we received uh, 200 mule messages that we received during that time frame and so so yeah all the cpu utilization and everything is here it's under control everything is going smoothly and then um this is the memory size that is consuming is 207 mb so since this is a just a simple application uh so that's why it's not taking that much of utilization or memory but uh if you have a well like uh, uh big application or a complex application based on that you have to you have to look after all these data that how your application is behaving and uh, what is the correct worker size for your application and what is what would be the uh, v code and everything what all configuration that you decide so yeah um i think i I'm done with my presentation. Um, you can ask questions if you need, if you want. Or there is a question: What is the difference between any point run time manager dashboard monitoring and any point monitoring? Okay, so any point dashboard. Uh, any point runtime manager or dashboard monitoring is nothing uh, it's the alert is there for the any point runtime from runtime manager so we have the alerts uh, but okay, so if you go to the runtime manager okay so this is something that we have the application and then we have the alerts here so based on the runtime so basically for the application when you create any alerts for that particular application saying that any business error will happen or any kind of the deployment error then you'll create the alerts for the runtime uh, in the runtime manager for your applications basically but for the monitoring uh, the alerts when you create so the uh, monitoring the dashboard and everything is available in the monitoring only and you can create alerts here as well but this is for your overall app network and for that uh, as per the basically the performance data so the utilization and everything so that we have uh, that that we have for that so i can show you the slide as well so this is the condition for the alert type so this is for the basic alerting for any point monitoring so in the monitoring we can create this kind of alerts and for the runtime manager we can create this uh, all these deployment field uh, success and worker not responding CPU users memory users all these things that we can create as per the uh, runtime manager alerts but for the monitoring alerts we have this uh, all these queries available for the CPU utilization thread count message count error count response time all these things that we can create here 
So basically, any point monitoring is more advanced than what we had in Runtime Manager dashboard. Monitor. Runtime Manager. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions? Or we have not answered any questions. Just please unmute yourself and ask. Uh, Upasna, one question. Integration uh, logging to Splunk. Yes, we can send. Uh, there is a Splunk appender, HTTP appender are, are there. But in Cloud Hub, it is not enabled by default. You have to contact Millsoft support team in order to enable your custom logging. In the log 4 g XML, you can define the HTTP appender, Splunk appender, and the other ELK appenders. So it will send data to the Splunk or ELK. And uh, the default logging, uh, which is available for application will be disabled if you enable for uh, external logging. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Vikalp uh, and Sora for a wonderful session. So it's very knowledgeable and uh, giving uh, knowledge to the everyone. So I also thank you for everyone for that. But uh, this is not the end of our uh, the session. I have, uh, let me share my screen. So I want to show you. So basically, uh, yeah, basically, uh, what next? So basically, tweak hashtag on MuleSoft Meetup if you like something. Uh, if you want to mention something, so you can uh, use that. And this is our Ahmedabad Meetup page. So just uh, in your profile updates, uh, just just subscribe to that uh, Ahmedabad whenever any MuleSoft virtual meetup will come so you will get notification and uh, the feedback after uh, around three o'clock you will get one email uh, as a survey form what you like what you don't like what will be the next topic and uh, if you want to become a, uh, a speaker want to give us given a session so you can mention your name also or you can contact your organization Sheikh Mainuddin or suggest any new topic for any new speaker and any questions uh, related to the program, related to the virtual meetup, what should be need, need to be changed, what should be good, what should be bad. So all kind of queries we can send to the mills of meetup.com. And our next meetup, the date is not decided, location and also topic is not decided. And uh, yes, nominate yourself for the next speaker, suggest a topic as well. So <laughs> that is all about from my side. Now it is a time for quiz. So let me stop sharing. So I'm going to I'm going to paste a question uh, in the chat box. I'm going to paste the question in the chat box, and uh, the first the who will be answer first? Bikal and Saurabh will help me to identify who basically given an answer first. Okay. So I'm going to write a question, and I'm going to paste here. Okay. So. Shake, shake. Wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. Just, just mm -hmm. share it. The, share the question or a uh, screen. Uh, because once people start answering, the question will get lost in the chat window. So if okay, you can okay. paste the question on a notepad or uh, somewhere and share your screen, it would be great. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Just give me one minute. Let me type the question in the uh, notepad. I have written that. Just give me one minute. And guys, uh, uh, just uh, some TNC uh, which will be applicable. If you guys already won a voucher in any other meetup recently, please uh, don't participate. Give chance to others because this program is for everybody and uh, all should get the chance to uh, for the trainings or certification vouchers. So recently, if you won some voucher in some other meetups, uh, give chance in this. So, let me share my screen. Uh, Santosh, there is 
Santos, we we prefer uh, everybody should get the chance. So that's the reason. If you already won vouchers in any other meetup recently, I would uh, request you not to participate here because we want to give chances to everyone. So I'm just saying the yeah. recent meetups, not uh, a meetup which was uh, more than one month old. So because because anyway uh, you will be getting it is not like that key uh, the we, as we are organizing number of virtual meetups at every location as, as you can see that in india ahmedabad mumbai every location in every meetup we have a three winners so everyone get a chance every meetup so just focus on that and you might get winner you might get training and certification so just uh, uh, am I my screen is visible, yes right? your screen is visible just share the question on uh... yes yeah, so <clears throat> yes so I have a notepad here as you can see that notepad and a new one I have questions so when you read the question when you I click on that so you have to uh, answer your question in the chat your okay? answer okay so basically yeah. you are going to uh, share the question on the which one notepad okay and notepad okay the answer will be in the chat okay okay so guys the first and my question, first person to give the yes. right answer will be winner is it uh, shake winner okay yes yes it is it is okay so let me open that yo this is the question uh you are on the full screen, screen actually yep. okay. huh? yeah i guess yeah. are you able to what is the date for the next Munsoc Connect event it with location? <laughs> with location. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, one single answer. Not... One single answer. Uh, yeah. I guess we have the answer. And that's not. Uh, 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 who is given? Uh, it's still, over 30. It's still, it's still, it's still not a correct answer. I don't see any correct answer I... till now. <laughs> <laughs> no, no location, guys. Location, location. Just pay attention. I think uh, uh, answered again. I okay. think we got answered. Uh, it is uh, means uh, I want a date as well as the location and the same answer. So. Uh, The winner will be uh, not America, 13th of October. We, the question was about connect, not the meetups, guys. Yes, let me. Yeah, connect. The question the connect was here. about connect, not. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Connect. Yeah, question was. So the not given a. Uh, because uh, someone, many of us let Mulesoft meet up, but it is a Mulesoft Connect event date and location. So it's not just ping me your email ID here in the chat. The full name is. Uh, I'll help you, not uh, email ID. I have his email ID. Okay, okay, okay. So ready for the next question? Are you able to see my screen? Yeah, it is. Uh, okay, so I'm going to click on the next tab. It is. Uh, still, we didn't see. Okay, yeah. The so what is the HTTP status code for too many request error message? When we got too many requests, what is the HTTP status code? So I think everyone can see the answer. Let me see the chat options. Okay, so we got. So the first is Santos. <clears throat> no, no. First is uh, Shiva Raman Krishna Ganji. Yes, yes. Okay, so just copy the email ID uh, of Shiva Raman. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you third question. Are you able to see Notepad? No, not yet. Yeah. Yes, not what is there. 
I'm going to click on the the third tab. This is. Uh, I think you're able to see right question. Yes, Saurabh and Bikal. Yeah, the uh, answer is here. Saurabh, help us. Which one? I guess yeah. it is in titanium, right? Or it's platinum. in titanium, yeah. So yeah, now so we are talking so about uh, that logging monitoring. monitoring. Yeah. So who is the winner? Prashant so P. Here, Prashant P. Okay, just copy the email ID. Yeah, OK. So, if you have a email ID, right, Vikal? Uh, I have only for. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Vikal, I have one question. Vikal, this is mm -hmm. the first winner. So, mm -hmm. uh, I have logged in using my Gmail ID, but my training account is with my company ID. So, if you are going to give some vouchers for the certification or training, is it possible to give it in my? Company ID because this Gmail uh, ID I don't have the training. You you can because uh, my, my uh, company is a partner. My company is yeah, a partner. I agree. Yeah, we we agree, but we only yeah. nominate. Uh, uh, the, we use email IDs for, with which you have registered for the event. You can create a new the okay. training account or you can connect with uh, the training team uh, whenever you receive voucher or not. So kindly, okay, uh, so, so all all. All winners, please DM your emails to Shake yeah. from in the chat. You yeah. can directly DM to Shake. Yes, directly. but is it a possibility? Is it a possibility that I take the training or the certification using the Gmail account and then ask the training ops team to merge that with my company account? Yeah, that that you can. I think that's connect a... with uh, that you can connect with your. No. Immune support Thank can you. help you with that. Yeah, uh, sure. yeah. I check. I check this Santosh. Hello. I yeah, uh, can we have multiple training accounts and can we uh, attempt exams for uh, like we have personal mail ID and company mail ID and two training accounts we have. So can we uh, attempt, attend trainings from two accounts? Ideally, it is not recommended, Santosh. You should have only one. So that's the reason we ask you to. Uh, uh, we ask Beth uh, to connect with the. Training team, they will yeah, help training, you with that. Training team confirmed that they are not merging accounts now after the new migration. Mm -hmm. So they were not mm -hmm. able to migrate any accounts or merge any accounts. Mm -hmm. So as we have uh, two training accounts that exist uh, in this use of space, so we can't merge it. So is it any conference issue to attend trainings or uh, attend exams in both? Uh, the... that, that is again a question for training team. We. Uh, as per the training team guideline, you should use only one account. That's what we see on the side. But uh, again, you can connect to training team. You can ask them a question. Yeah, uh, but what... we can. Yeah, but we can. We cannot use our official email ID for all these personal meetup. These you are can migrate. Official. You can switch to your Gmail ID. You can always switch to your Gmail ID instead of merging. You can switch to your uh, uh, Gmail ID from your organization. Mm -hmm. I did that. You can do that. No, but my company do not allow it. My company says we need to show to the uh, like uh, the uh, rules no, of the, state. It's not my company. Uh, we we cannot do anything about it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it is okay. Totally okay. Uh, anyway, I am just more posting more... my both of my IDs. I just posting my both of the IDs. Yeah, if it, it is just... possible, get it into yeah. Uh, okay. uh, we will we. Okay, Sorry. we will. Uh, uh, Vikal, uh, Sheikh, I have got something to say. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for the first question, I gave the uh, first answer. Can you just check once? Uh, who who yeah. is this? Uh, what is your name? Uh, Nitish. Uh, one minute. Let me. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Right. Fully? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so here we have. Is not there. Uh, you have mm. just commented the location. No, no. I, I'll tell. Uh, first of all, I gave the uh, look. So, uh, so date. it should be. Date. It should be location in single answer. Single answer. Answer. America as well. The first one. Nitish, single answer. 
no no i gave 13 october first then america as well when she yes. said probably one question as well yeah so that's what uh, the question was very clear it should be a single answer uh, okay that's why right. it's so bad luck actually yeah. because uh, the location date and the, the location location and the date i need an answer in one message yeah, uh, that's why i choose uh, yeah. so it was very clear so i gave the uh, look, uh, date first then uh,